Hello there guys, what is going on? Daniel Childs back here again. Hope you're doing well. We are nearly at the weekend. Still no official at the time of recording Mauricio Pochettino announcement as Chelsea's head coach. I was actually on the 90 Min show earlier today and they asked me when's it happening. I still don't know. I don't even know if Pochettino has arrived back in the UK yet from Barcelona. All keeping it under wraps. I just hope it does happen before the weekend because I don't think Sunday is going to be very enjoyable from a Chelsea fan point of view. So hopefully we will have that before then. But today's show is going to look at Ruben Loftus cheek some links away to Italy. Will he leave Chelsea this summer? Is it the best move for him and for Chelsea to part ways? Also, Gift Orban, the striker that is making waves and apparently is on Chelsea's radar ahead of this summer transfer window. Then we will talk about the new signing that Chelsea have made has kind of been talked about for uh, several months now and another young talent and how that links into the multi-club model which looks to be coming to fruition for Chelsea's new ownership this summer. Before we get into any of that good stuff, I want to ask you guys if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads on the channel and if you're listening on the podcast, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I think that Ruben, it would be sad to see him go, but I think I've been resigned as as once, you know, a massive advocate of Ruben Loftus cheek as as kind of the next big thing for Chelsea. And, you know, it's kind of going through old things now in terms of that like ACL injury in 2019, which kind of changed the course of his, his career. But to be fair, you know, I've also said this when I've been asked about Ruben in, in the past two seasons, that it is an achievement that he has still come back to Chelsea. And even though he isn't a first teamer, he is seen as a rotational player, to even have the career he's had given those hardships a few years ago, I think it is still an achievement. The problem is, I just don't see how his position at Chelsea is radically going to change. There may be a sense that with Mateo Kovacic potentially leaving, with Mason Mount potentially leaving, still not sure running Golo Kante, but I suspect he will stay as well. Could there be more chances next season? This is an interesting story from Nazar Kinsella in the Evening Standard. He was reporting today, and I saw this uh, reported elsewhere, that Ruben Loftus-Cheek must take a pay cut to join AC Milan. Uh, Ruben will be forced to take a pay cut to facilitate a potential move away from Stamford Bridge. Apparently, Chelsea are willing to offload Loftus-Cheek, but his 150 grand a week wages represent a stumbling block for clubs interested in signing the 27-year-old. There are links as well to a certain Fakai Tsumori who made the move to AC Milan. And how it could be beneficial to Loftus Cheek. There is a, a clear disparity between the finances in the Premier League and European clubs. Chelsea have to kind of accept that if they are looking to cut a lot of the players from this big squad. Ruben very much is one of those in line. Now it says in the piece that Ruben would kind of have to be convinced to leave Chelsea. He's always very adamantly said, this is my boyhood club. I want to make it at Chelsea. But unless Poch comes in and says... Loftus Cheek is going to be my guy. I can see him as this kind of mobile, aggressive um, number six or number eight in a midfield. We know how much energy that Maurizio Pochettino requires from his team, and particularly from that central midfield. If he's looking to get the fullbacks up and they have to kind of cover, you look at what Victor Banyama offered, uh, Musa Dembele, Eric Dyer. Uh, I, I don't think Ruben's exactly like all of those players, but you know, you're just kind of looking at kind of a deeper or number eight position. Where could Ruben get minutes? But you look at the investment in Enzo Fernandez, in Andre Santos. Could Carnage or Kameka have a better second season because of Pochettino? Could Lewis Hall move into central midfield? And the potential of Chelsea signing another central midfielder on top of that that is probably going to be seen as a first teamer. Ruben, if he wants to get first team football, I, I just think he's kind of in. Maybe it's harsh to say a bottleneck, but he's kind of just in this this state where he's going to remain that type of rotational figure. I think as a fan, I don't mind him being that. I don't mind him coming in and having cameos throughout the season. Probably going to be less than next year because there's less games to use him in, but you can see the talent he has and you can see during a season how he can be important or, or particularly under Thomas Tuchel last season when he came in and, and can be a versatile player. I just don't know the benefit for him as a player if he's desiring more first-team football. Is there going to become a reality check that where he can go somewhere like Serie A and 
can play for a big club like AC Milan and potentially get those minutes that he needs at this point in his career. He's in his prime now. Does he just want to be sat on the bench as Chelsea and Pochettino potentially look at younger players ahead of him? That's the big question. And I want to ask you guys, I, I think that Ruben... You know, he isn't a disastrous player. I, I don't think he's someone like a character I'm looking at and going, yeah, I think we need to get him out. It's, it's nothing like that. I just think for his own career, isn't it just best to go elsewhere and play first team football on a more regular basis at a very good level, Serie A. So we'll see if that materializes. Another name that uh, Nazar Gonzalez was talking about today in the Evening Standard was uh, Ghent striker Gift Orban. Because apparently Chelsea, Spurs and Man United are all interested. And uh, the Ghent striker has scored 19 times in 19 games so far this season in the Belgian Pro League. He's only 20 years old and he's also scored within those 19 goals in the Europa Conference League at a rate of a goal every 75 minutes. We were speaking in yesterday's show about the potential striker targets. The likes of Victor Osserman, of course, kind of the blockbuster target, I think, for a lot of European clubs this summer, who, if he is going to move, if Napoli do budge, is going to move for a massive fee. We also spoke about Ivan Toni, which is probably going to be ruled out now. He's been you know, banned for eight months. That could be extended uh, worldwide by FIFA. Um, Tony may appeal that, but I think that pretty much rules out any move for him this summer. I also touched on Lukaku, uh, Amanda Breuer, and... Gift or ban, you know, very much as I, I kind of referenced yesterday, you're looking at, say, David Dacho Fofana kind of approach of, of looking at these kind of more unknown players, younger players, players coming into their prime where Chelsea could maybe buy them for, say, 10 to 15 million and maybe uncover a gem. However, I, I think that there would be a lot of pressure on that player to come in and, and to take that role. Um, and maybe that he would be looking for a bit like how I see getting a coach who's had big club experience. I think that role of striker is so, so pressurised. It really is at Chelsea. And given how difficult it's been, I also think if you've just signed Dacho Fafana, why aren't you giving him those minutes? I think he'd be looking and turning around and going, well, you know, I could be this guy for you. You know, I was very impressive in the Norwegian league and I've come here and, and you're going to sign another one on top of that. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I think Gift Orban, I've been, you know, uh, people ask me this week, you know, have you seen that much of him? Not an expert on him. This first time I've heard his name. You're going to sign a striker in this mould. I don't see why you just wouldn't give your younger strikers that you currently have on the books those minutes unless it is kind of connected into the multi-club model, which we will touch on because Chelsea have made a signing. Uh, it hasn't been officially announced by the club, but Kendre, uh, but Kendre Piers, um, this is a Chelsea deal for a Colombian midfielder, 2007 born, will join Chelsea in 2025. This has been known for some time. Less about the player because 2025 feels a long way away and it's more about the multi-club model and when you're looking at talents like Fafana, um, even Andre Santos who I'd like to see feature in the first team next season or get some time in pre-season but how these talents are going to be used potentially in a multi-club project and Jacob Steinberg reported on this for the Guardian last night that Chelsea apparently are close to starting that project by buying a stake in uh, Strasbourg in France. Uh, Chelsea are close to kick-starting their multi-club project by buying a stake in uh, Strasbourg. The deal would be a major boost for the Premier League side's owners Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Capital who have been looking for suitable clubs to purchase since last summer. Bowley has spoken about a multi-club model being a way we can show pathways for our young superstars to get on the Chelsea pitch while getting them real game time and if you are kind of mopping up a lot of these talents and you know they aren't going to go straight into the first team you know they're going to kind of be blocked by other talents and as well as, as Todd Bowley referred to maybe there is a flaw in the sense of you know giving their development elsewhere could you go to a club that you know is connected to Chelsea and maybe gives you more of a chance to develop him in a way that is, is suitable for the first team I don't think that's always the case I think we have seen in recent years that Chelsea players have gone to the championship I, I, I'm always an advocate for the championship I'm not saying that every loan works there but again Ian Matson this season I know sometimes it is you have a very talented player they go to a league it isn't because of the league it's because of the talent of the player but I still think it's a very very good league for developing young players at a high level that gives them an intensity and demand of football that sure isn't exactly like the Premier League but I think gives them enough competition and, and quality and physicality too in, in the English game which I think is really important so you don't have that kind of shock of bringing a player in who as we've seen in recent years higher profile ones to Chelsea who aren't kind of ready for the demand of the Premier League in different ways to to foreign leagues but 
I think it's exciting just from a, a point of view as, as as a football tourist of maybe going to some of these clubs and, and seeing how they do and seeing how it works out and, and shapes up. It's been spoken about since September, October time when I think uh, Todd Bolly did that kind of controversial in a way conference where he spoke about it. But we've known that this has been something in the pipeline for some time. Uh, Portuguese club Porto Menense is also referenced in the piece by Jacob Steinberg. But it seems that something will be happening in the coming months. So we'll see how it develops. And I do think the likes of uh, Kendro Paez and, and potentially other names will be bought, hopefully in the future, to send to some of these clubs. I think that is kind of the the interest rather than throwing them into the first team. But now you have Maurizio Pochettino, who has a good track record of bringing through young players. You know, I, I can understand it to some extent, but, you know, if you have someone who is more willing to give academy products time in the first team is it would it be that much of a, of a demand of course Pochettino we don't know how long he'll be at Chelsea for it's 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 silly to su- assume he's going to be here for 20 years or even four years or even two years at Chelsea's uh, level of, of turnover in manager but I'm interested to hear your thoughts do you do you care about this do you think it's a good idea do you think it's a bad idea what do you think about some of the young talents Chelsea are targeting let me know in the comments below but that is it for today's edition of Let's Talk Chelsea you can follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea please do give the podcast a rate and review like on YouTube and I will see you again very soon all the best mm-hmm.